exploring the book of Esther. For many years, the book of Esther has been for me a very, very interesting book because in this book we do not find the record of a man of God and a priest which is very strange because the character of scripture is such that regardless of the dispensation you would usually find someone who would represent the voice and the hand of God within the context of that dispensation but Esther is very strange the Bible starts by flaunting the glory of a very strange king called Ahasuerus please follow me the Bible is not careful to show us the length and the breadth of this man's achievement, the extent of his greatness. That he was a king that exerted dominion over 127 provinces. A single man. I wonder why the Bible would take out the time and the rigor to be that detailed. It was fine enough to say there was once a great king. And this man was head of 127 provinces. That's enough. But the Bible goes on to give a, meticulously. The Bible talks about his princes. And all the people that represented his cabinet. Amen. Then the scene changes. The Bible introduces a very strange woman. Who the Bible admits to be very beautiful. Called Vashti. Please follow me. The Bible is talking to us about a woman who at that time was his bride called Queen Vashti. And the Bible lets us know that she was a woman who was fair to look upon. I'm just taking the narrative so that we'll save time. And then at a point it was, in those days it was very consistent in the character of kings to organize banquets and invite neighboring princes or neighboring kings and to flaunt their glory in their presence they would show them the spoils of war they would show them the treasures of the palace they would call the orators to come and you know just captivate the people with their skill and all of that and on this one occasion the king called for a banquet and then while the men were under the influence of the wine and the bounty of the palace on the other side of the palace was Vashti having her own thing she had her own cabinet too and please follow this narrative because there are two things I'll be discussing one today and then the other tomorrow the next major issue the Bible discusses is the dishonor that a woman communicates to the king and the consequence that follows the king calls for Vashti to come and all he wanted to do with her can you imagine that was for her to just turn around and go around and tell the kings look take a good look at this woman who is called my wife and the moment Vashti heard that she felt insulted and she believed she was being used and she rebelled she sent a reply go and tell the king Vashti will not come are we together the king is grieved but decides to stay calm very good man and then the elders come together and advise the king and say Mr. Man we are in trouble. It looks like you want to be passive about this issue. This woman just showed dishonor and she is in a position where anything she does is regarded worthy of emulation. The, the effect of this that she has done is that God has to begin to do likewise. Are we together? So he says do something that will be a warning preserve the honor of the women in your province by you are more interested in the continuity of your province than your personal agenda and the king says okay that's all right and they threw Vashti away please listen the book of Esther is very interesting because the moment Vashti is banished then the story takes another switch that there is a man who sat at the gate called Mordecai, a Jew. Am I boring you? And then Mordecai took a lady in his custody, a village girl, to be very, very modest. 
and the bible says that she had no father no mother please follow me and there is an announcement from the palace gather all the virgins in shushan the king is about to look for another wife and mordecai summons the courage to bring his little girl go and try your luck paradventure the king may like you are we together now and the rest is history eventually she becomes queen and then being queen she now becomes very strange the only book in the bible where the official voice of god and the advancer of god's interest was not a priest not a prophet not a mighty man warrior but a woman a woman it was because of that woman that the jews were preserved it was because of that woman that mordecai was preserved a woman who did not use a knife and yet judge her man a woman who did not use a knife and yet restored chaos please follow me there is something powerful you will learn in why god allowed a woman to be the real actor the first wonder in the book of esther was the transition of to become the wife of kings in those days were arrogant people they will not only say go they will say you are not beautiful they were they were like gods so what did esther do precious people of god that would transit this little village girl who would dare not stand close to the king's palace but now had gotten favor with the king not only to become his queen but she was willing to divide her kingdom without divorce divide the kingdom without divorce let's honor the pastor thank you sir amen. hallelujah amen esther chapter 4 i'll begin to read from verse 13 and then i'll just share a principle and we'll pray i hope we're not going to be tired of praying in this conference i believe in prayer hmm. please read verse 13 with me if it's projected if you can see it and you're a christian one to read then mordecai commanded to answer esther uh-huh think not with thyself that thou shall escape in the king's house more than all the jews verse 14 for if thou altogether holdest thy peace at this stop 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 don't rush if you hold your peace when at that means this season requires a response esther if you respond another time it will not produce the same effect there is a time esther and god is demand on a response the letter and the threat of haman i hope you understand the vendetta between haman and mordecai, that mordecai would not bow as a jew and haman said no i need absolute loyalty this man threat to the position my exalted position and not only mordecai he wanted to annihilate every jew are we together and mordecai now sent word to esther and esther wanted to the mistake of vashti because let me confess the palace can disconnect you with the pain of where you came from to the point that you may not remember that once upon a time you were in a position that now exalted god desires that you go back the palace can so fade the scars of your pain you will forget you were once at the backside and so esther was saying look this is not an issue of urgency i'm queen lead me and mordecai said go and tell her don't you forget that you are also a jew they may start with us but they will not end with us are we together now verse 14 
for if thou altogether holdest thy peace when at this time i told you about times and seasons that every time and every season requires a response and then he says there then there shall be enlargement and deliverance arise to the jews from another place but thou and thy father's house shall be destroyed now here's the point please every woman of god here read with me the last um what's now the clause one to go and who knoweth whether thou art come to the kingdom for such a time as this please sit god bless you who knowest whether thou has come to this kingdom for such a time as this hallelujah fasting is banished and there is a vacancy and you know god is totally not interested in anything that he cannot find a window for me to advance his kingdom please listen when you study the bible historically many other things happen concurrently with the things written in the bible that were worthy of being recorded some of them were recorded but they were never captured in scripture everything captured in scripture were captured with respect to their contribution to kingdom advance if god could not find a space in that story where christ will be revealed it was useless in god's economy whatever promotes christ is what he's interested in it doesn't matter how popular if christ cannot find a space for himself in any story in any life in any situation it is not worth his participation for a long time the issue of the palace was not a concern to god because everybody there did not give him space god began to be interested in the palace when there was vacancy because his desire was to find a way to bring the jews out of captivity there were people who had hopped from one level of captivity to the other notice that the name god was never mentioned until esther showed up there was nothing in that palace that seemed to honor god and so god too was inert and silent but the moment he found a vacancy he started saying now my interest can be promoted and then a little girl gets to the palace and god says finally i've gotten someone who can represent my purposes and through that one woman not a prophet not a king not a priest the only book like i said where a woman played the role of both the prophetic the apostolic without no ordination from anyone she became the voice of god within that land there are two keys that we will learn from the entire book of esther i studied very carefully the spiritual tools that esther used both for her exaltation and the preservation of god's people and surprisingly i thought i would find so many keys i was shocked to find only two and this is what we are going to be discussing and that whoever will align to possess these keys in this season will inevitably reproduce esther's dimension of results uniqueness and a man's usefulness the rewarding the discerning of a man's usefulness the usefulness of a person could be an object is called honor to discern this is a phone the ability to discern the usefulness of this phone and the ability to not take it for granted i cannot act like my life with my phone and my life outside my phone is the same that's dishonor i must acknowledge the role and the ease that this gadget as small as it is contributes to the improvement of my life it can help my efficiency is that true now listen please dishonor therefore is the trivializing of a man's usefulness 
Dishonor is the trivializing of the contribution of a person or an object in your life. I show you why many people continue to fail. Hmm. Oh no. This is one of the most powerful spiritual mysteries that the Lord taught me outside of the law of encounter. I thank God for the privilege and the access He's, grant, he's granted me to um, the revelatory dimensions of God. But I submit to you that if you master honor, there is no power in existence that sustains the ability to clamp you down in one position. You will live your life as if Satan does not exist. It's called honor. Please pay attention. I show you why great people do not necessarily rise to the position that befits their sacrifice. They have knowledge. They have skill. They even have God. But they have trivialized the excellency. Honor is not a ladder. It's a lift. It can turn your life around in a moment. In a twinkling of an eye. Please listen to me. In this kingdom, who hates you does not matter. But who likes you matters. <laughs> Please away with that theology that it doesn't matter. Um, I, I don't need men. If you are saying that with respect to God's sovereign power, you are right. But if you are saying that with respect to trivializing the usefulness of men, sit back, relax, and experience the shock that your ignorance will produce. The episodes of pain that will come as a result of ignorance. To the point that the psalmist says, what is man? Lord, you have options. There are too many things to think about in the throne. But in the midst of the worship, he thinks of man. To the point that he's not ashamed to chase man. He's, he, 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 he's unashamed to make his vulnerability. I mean, he shows us how vulnerable and soft-spotted he is. How dare you trivialize man? What is man that thou art mindful of? Nor the son of man that thou visitest him. Please learn this and learn it forever. All blessings come from God through men to you no blessing comes from god to you it looks like it came from god to you even jesus came from god through men to men all destructions come from satan through men to men and all blessings with no exception whatsoever if it looked like you had an encounter with God interfacing you and God was an intercessor somewhere just because you could not see the person Anna the prophetess was in the temple for 60 years praying down Jesus it was not just Mary and Angel Gabriel there was a man in between please learn this I want you to lead this conference with something you know that you can activate right here and now and it can turn your life around are we together all blessings come from God through men to men it is possible for God to say yes and a man says no the answer in your life will be no hmm. believers please listen please listen David is in the wilderness seeing visions of himself being king. God rejects Saul as king. A man comes in between, calls Samuel and says, Lord, I refuse. And David is paying the price. God already had told him, Mr. Man, you are next king. A prophet stands in between and says, God, I have not allowed this. And David's destiny is in the balance, waiting for the approval of not God, a man. And God himself, knowing the immutability of the system he built, had to come to the man to negotiate. He said, look, Samuel, let's not drag this. How long shall you weep, seeing that I've rejected Saul as king? Don't delay. Listen, listen. Don't delay another man's destiny. Pick up your horn. Go to the house of Jesse. Couldn't God bypass Samuel? 
what was the big deal in Samuel says an ignorant Christian was it not because they met Samuel that the donkey returned back home restoration is true my question is under what condition every possibility in the kingdom is governed by spiritual conditions that make them real in your life just because they are true based on God's verdict does not mean they will manifest is God helping us this morning praise the Lord oh I will I will the goal is knowledge please listen very carefully I'm showing you and I hope for some of you I'm changing your perspectives that your answer the answer to the many prayers continues to move around you and is within your circumference it is the intelligence to understand how to attract that answer to you that the missing link is not your prayer maybe the missing link may not even be ungodliness that there is a spiritual weapon that can transit men from where the backside right to the throne i know you know favor but leave favor we will discuss it the mother that gives birth to favor is called honor until honor is pregnant there is no child called favor if honor is barren you are in trouble you will never never your first assignment is to pray that honor can take in when honor takes in begin to rejoice because a child is coming and the name of that child is favor i cannot know you by myself unless you take over we cannot see this on our own jesus take over we cannot learn this by ourselves unless you take over listen please sit down let me tell you this there are many families here that have the privilege of leverage from the credibility and the integrity of their parents and may god bless you maximize it but i'm sure without contradiction that there are a few of us here that the only ladder you will have in your life is the ladder that is built through this understanding otherwise you will remain at the backside of shushan forever please hear me your growth and your lifting is not just dependent on the will of god his will for you is clear it's not a mystery i know the thoughts that i think towards you 29 and verse 11 jeremiah saith the lord they are thoughts of good peace and not of evil to bring you a future and an expected end are we together yes it is not it is not we're not in the dark as to God's desire for us to rise to the top because he said in John 15 and verse 8 he said herein is my father glorified let me show you how the father takes glory he says when you bear much fruit so then shall ye be my disciples let me interpret that for you it means in your bearing much fruit you validate that I mentored you well you're not bearing fruit is an indictment on my mentorship god says let it not be that i did not show you the systems of the kingdom so when you produce results jesus comes to a tree and finds that tree with green leaves and then no fruit and he curses the tree he doesn't ask satan help me and curse this tree by himself the same anointing you want was used to cause the tree and in 24 hours the tree went down notice how sad results he saw fruitlessness it's got to someone this morning honor is the reason why you will live where you are to the next level or is the reason why you may remain where you are in spite of the fasting in spite of the prayer i came from a background that did not provide an advantage by default and i knew that if i didn't learn this 
I will continue to propose things I would never see in my life. It is painful to propose things that your life cannot capture. There is no ladder. There is no dimension. The next time you are writing streams of income, write honor. When you write real estate, write honor. You can earn a living practicing honor. Please understand what I'm telling you. This is very powerful. Very powerful. Especially, let me say this respectfully, our generation of young people, we don't understand honor at all. Is the reason why we, life continues to be hard. Because transgression is a mother. When she gives birth, the name of her child is hardship. Hardship has a science to it. Proverbs 13 and verse 15. The Bible says, Good understanding procureth favor. It says, But the way of transgressors is hard. A transgressor is not an unbeliever. A transgressor is a violator of God's system. I came truly to charge our hearts so that we will have results that bring glory to the name of the lord there are many skillful people in this land in this city around this nation and they continue to wonder why they never rise some music ministers some men of god some women of god some career people please listen very carefully People continue to have visions and visions of growth in ministry and they wonder why in spite of all the machineries that they put in place they add every other thing to the ingredient except honor what everything in the palace minus honor produced the king is still on his throne his servants still loyal to him the chariot still in place the treasure house still full of gold and honor is extracted from a palace for one day and the palace is almost in trouble think what has been happening in your life everything minus honor degree minus honor prayer minus honor is god speaking to us honor is the discerning the celebrating and if need be the rewarding of a person of a system let me submit to you that the only reason why we have failed in life is not so much about satan it is dishonor dishonor to god dishonor to men dishonor to principles dishonor to god dishonor to men dishonor to principles take satan out of this world men will continue suffering they will not even know he has left that's when you will know what part of our lives have nothing to do with him dishonor to god dishonor to men dishonor to principles in heaven where the devil is not angels don't just enter the throne room satan is not there evil is not there yet you don't jump in and out of the throne room there are doors there is order in heaven hallelujah when you trivialize the usefulness of god in your life please listen when you tr when god becomes like one of the many important things you just classify him as number 13 in the list so you are in my heart oh god the jealousy of god was designed to fight everything till he's number one even if he gave it to you it's amazing that god can fight something he once gave you read the bible and see god giving people thrones and fighting it again the moment he cannot find his place exalted the moment you add many things to god and say lord you are important but not the only important thing this dishonor has translated to marriages you're my wife what is there are we not married what part of the ring can't you see you see that dishonor dishonor communicated in the pungency of our words communicated in the sarcasm the body languages that are communicated when we see great people we so trivialize them 
what is it about this artist is it just because god gave the person a good voice what is there if i train my little voice won't i be there you see that attitude alone you don't know you are programming a climate of hardship let me tell you why many nigerians continue to go through pain we are embarrassed to acknowledge great things when we see greatness we act as if we are blind towards it someone can come into this beautiful church right now and see our mothers and our sisters and say so what is what is so special about the conference what is in i started organizing conferences since i was small that's why you are where you are you, you see this kind of attitude please learn this there are many young arrogant preachers that would enter and see men of god people seasoned people who have been used by god and just look and wonder okay so what is he saying let me see if i can get one or two things i hear they say he's a nice man of god you you see let me tell you this my brothers and my sisters there are battles you cannot fight the fact that you want to fight it is proof that your life is under an attack because there are battles in this life that you should never try to fight are we together oh no i preached a message seven years ago that became a blessing to the body of christ and i'm honored to be to have been used by god it's called commanding results it was a vision please listen it was a vision that i had a revelation as to why people's lives never move and i said lord there has to be a way should i fail simply because of my background was it my fault you are born looking like your parents but you die looking like your knowledge and decisions it's true so someone has to be tired this morning and say no it can't be like this again someone you have dishonored something you have dishonored has authorized your hardship listen to me very carefully a mother with eight children and all of them responsible children and you say she's just lucky let her leave the children to go abroad and see you see that dishonor you have one child you are almost having bp and a woman had eight children and as a widow took care of them every time you see consistent results it's no longer guesswork there is a grace you cannot be exceptional indefinitely by your strength is proof that another system has lifted you and any wise person will discern that behind these results there is a grace i can tell you the key to close doors dishonor you don't need to ask the door to close just practice dishonor and watch the doors shut on their own every door that opens opens to honor every door that is shut the door of the palace in spite of the chains she did not have a key but honor took her to the palace she bypassed the protocol let let her dasa had she tried to access the king on her own even mordecai could not cross the gate but a villager's honor takes her right to the palace someone is rising in the name of jesus that means the lack of job was not really about the job it was something about your dishonor when you trivialize a man's usefulness in your life then you are brought into a system where you are forced to recognize that men can be very useful in the rising of men praise the lord i've had the privilege to meet very good people and i've made it as a culture as a person to never trivialize greatness when i see it it takes a lot of humility honor many times will sting your ego but the lift and the dimension it will take you is worth that price please listen to me listen to me the first key we see in the book of esther 
that was responsible for this effortless transition in fact the first key that we see notice that Vashti did not just backslide down from the palace she left immediately look how dangerous this honor is the king never if if it is very clear from scripture that Vashti was not a woman of honor because there's no record of her running to the king to say oh king have mercy upon me king to hell with you what is there about your palace it's all like let me remind you that once upon a time you were not in the palace in the name of jesus christ i forbid it for enter the palace and have to come out because of this honor my bible says to me the path of the just is as a shining light the bible says it shines ever brighter I've seen this with men of God. You are here today in this height. Have you seen names and seen people that seem to capture your attention? Then a season comes. Just fades. Sometimes it could be a music artist. Everybody is placing a demand on your grace until you forgot that the favor and the honor of the people is a trust you should not trivialize. And suddenly everything goes down whatever you can do in your life to make honor i know people who would have been managing directors today without battles every qualification prophecy had come this honor shut that door and threw the padlock through the key anywhere Train your spirit man when jesus was born he was taken to the temple to honor the people that spiritually contributed to his arrival please listen taken to the temple simeon the prophet lifts him blesses him another prophetess blesses him and then he starts to live now watch this until jesus came to the sea the official voice of god within that territory was john the prophet i hope you know that who we call the baptist baptism was a strategy to identify the christ look at the rigor he went through to be trained to be able to see jesus now john sees jesus coming and then he says behold the lamb that takes away the sins of the world and john said i know you are the christ and you know jesus you know that conversation and he says that um i am not even worthy to untie the latchet of your shoe jesus would have said i i thought you don't know jesus let me tell you this listen listen please listen jesus the word was under a close heaven for 30 years till honor opened his heavens jesus your jesus as the son of god his heavens were closed not even the father opened it he came to the existing authority within that land and jesus said suffer it to be so in other words this is an ordinance that not even me can violate please listen this is powerful it's a law it's not a suggestion it's not an opinion it's a law i jump here by mistake gravity will not say okay i know you are preaching you are just carried away i'm falling straight up praise the lord and then john dips jesus in water and the father is watching when jesus comes out then the bible says and the heavens over who said and have a crowd he would have tried it and be surprised he would have tried to call people he would have tried to collect a man's donkey and see what the roman people would have done for him you lose someone's donkey and say the master has need of it who else is the master if not caesar but when your heavens are open there are things that others can do and fail and you can do and pass with it please listen don't just be excited for nothing i want you to get this it's a principle we are going to pray shortly but you have to get this honor opens his heavens the father now says this is my beloved son what was he before that the father is saying this now 
haven't fulfilled this ordinance this is my beloved son in whom i am well pleased and then he says here hear you business woman who has announced that lagos should hear you just because you have a good guarantee you will be heard just because you have a voice that sings does not guarantee you will be heard please listen to me just because you have an anointing genuine anointing it doesn't mean you will be heard that verdict hear ye him that's what honor does hear ye her songs hear ye his sermons come to his church honor hear ye him jesus climbs up the mountain five thousand people climb with him because there is a verdict hear ye him for three days they are up that mountain he goes by the sea of Gennesaret and people hear me. Nobody can lift himself. It is not given to men. You do not have the ability to promote yourself. It is not within your jurisdiction. Your assignment is to align yourself to be discerned and promoted. Could this be why we are where we are? Could this be why prophecies continue to come week after week? Let me tell you, it is difficult to honor. His honor will change you like Samson. Even if the person is obviously wrong, the show of honor, we talk about the person. He said, look, just forget about it. I know it's true, but how do I say it now? There was a foolish man in the Bible who would have been at the wrath of a king except that he had a wise wife called Abigail. The woman quickly stepped in to bridge the foolishness that the dishonor of that man caused. Could this be the reason why many families do not work? There is a lot of prayer and spirituality but there are different versions of dishonor dishonor from the woman to her husband dishonor to several things i've shared this story and if you permit me to share it a true story i heard it somewhere many years ago that there was a man of god and this man was having a serious crisis in his family I think it had to do with maybe a financial crisis things were not working yet he was a pastor in a church just like this and people would always come to testify pastor prayed for me and doors open now i have a job now i'm abroad and all of that and things were i mean there was fire on the mountain in his own house and then one time a service was running like this and his wife just got up and walked out of the church imagine what happens if her mother just gets up and walks out of here you wonder what happened now and then the man was touched he finished the service did his counseling very quickly and reached for his house and he went home honey what is wrong she never uttered a word please pay attention he sat down at the table waiting for his meal what is wrong if i offended you i'm sorry we can talk about it that to serve him there's a section for it it's not that the holy of holies that way it doesn't come out carelessly not that day and then the plates and you know the man was laughing as if we've been married for years let's not do this children's let me eat she didn't say a word please listen when she brought the last item that would be on the table she now knelt down and looked at him her husband and said servant of God my family is in trouble listen carefully because the anointing on that man 
continued to bless people who discerned that he was not just a man that he was an anointed man and the wife said when they say lift your hands say well are you not my husband what we quarrel this morning i helped you with your bathing water what is all this lift your hand again and she was shocked that the church was rising but their home was dying and the woman like esther said i found the key it is this honor that has been closing the door today you are not my husband again today you are a man of god i am your member my home must change hear me let me teach you this there are many dimensions to every man you see the dimension you honor is the one that brings its riches to you your brother is not only your brother your brother is also a prophet he never prophesies to you because the only dimension you call is your brother so you receive stories about how the family is doing back at home that's a brother's reward there are women that carry certain graces please listen to me they never beg quarter to shame something must arise and bail them out you will never see them it's a grace they may not be educated but there's something about their bowing their knees it's like god covenanted with himself whatever they did to god that made him to enter that covenant and one day they'll say i'll pray for you well, I'll pray for me my pastor prayed nothing works talk more of you and you remain there let me tell you the truth human beings are mysteriously mysteriously strange just all you see is not all there is praise the lord in everyone seated here there are untapped spiritual dimensions that if honor is engaged on our lives can change there are many women who continue to pray for other people to have children but their children have not seen a need to come mommy i hope you are praying for us say, well i'll do my best and five years become seven years the day that daughter comes and says mommy this is a seed i brought say for what say, mm -hmm. i have watched everyone you prayed for come with twins triplets i'm not meeting my mother i'm meeting a woman with the grace that can terminate barrenness let me tell you the truth that day that day it would no longer be as usual for many years i would not preach in my own state i would preach in neighboring states i didn't know why that happened my own family my own blood mother things were not going as well and one time my mother was very very sad and she was fed up every time i went to greet them at home i didn't feel like a man of god again it was as if the anointing would hang at the gate as soon as i go out i said okay come back let's get back to work not because they were bad people but one day my blood mother biological mother she now looked at me and said we're tired of this there has to be a way and my mother cried that day and said but you are blessing others and lifting the lives of others and that day for the first time that grace and that anointing i felt that grace with all my heart and i laid my hands on my own blood mother and i said mommy i stand in the name of jesus and i shift you to a dimension untold today i speak to you in the name of the lord people who do not know me find our family house in joss and knock the gate are you apostles mothers this is for you thank you for giving back to apostle please listen if this teaching does not help you today i don't know where we are going to start from with you because this is a teaching that the results can be instant some of you your result can be after this service god is already showing you the person to truly go and honor to go and say look we are colleagues we graduated at the same time but you have never been without a job for three months when a company seems to throw you in three months another one has come what grace do you have is there ah, bros mm, leave bros please i'm tired of 
roaming around like Cain in Lagos, a place of opportunity. Don't you know that this city has its riches? But there are people whose hands has never touched it. They were born and bred here. People come upon your soil and place a demand to honor and walk away with blessings. Who is God speaking to this morning? There are many pastors. Let me tell you this. I've shared with you, maybe I'll just say this and then we'll pray. I'm teaching honor. In 2004, Reinhard Bonke came to Joss for a crusade. I left Kaduna State and I went down because I desired a grace upon that man's life. I was already a man of God. I was already working in miracles. I was already ministering to people. How stupid would I be to imagine we are at the same level? You will never receive from a colleague. There is no transference from colleague to colleague. There has to be a spiritual potential difference. Someone has got to acknowledge and discern. The Elijah, Elisha was never supposed to be a prophet. He was a farmer. But he decided to work with an angry man. If Elijah were your boss, you would know why the sons of the prophet were not happy people. That temperous man, you don't know what he will call today. Whether you will call fire or call whatever. And the sons of the prophet were obviously offended. But Elisha said, you can shout, oh, you don't know me. There's something I'm looking for. Listen, can you ignore the weakness in men to still get what they carry? Listen, let me teach you this. We're rounding up. I know why we never receive from men because they are ethin. And unfortunately, you will want God to switch the anointing to something more desirable. And God in his economy will leave it there. Let me tell you, the secret of receiving from men to transit to another dimension is hidden in the riddle of Samson. When Samson, please listen, when Samson tore a lion on his way to go and see a lady, are we together now? He returned after seven days and he found a mystery. He found that there were trees in that place, but the bees did not go to put honey in the tree. They came and entered inside the carcass and put honey there. And so when Samson came, he was looking for the honey and the bees directed him inside a smelly carcass. And he gave a riddle. He said, out of something strong has come something sweet. Why will bees not go to trees and enter a smelly carcass? This is the mystery of how God stores possibilities. The vessels may be smelly, but can you endure the smell to get the honey? That's the price. Whoever told you anointed people are perfect in themselves? Were you not pre-told that the treasure is in earthen vessels? Elijah is temperous, but ignore him and you will never carry the prophetic. Imagine a man following this harsh prophet. And he goes from Gilgal, Bethel, down to Jordan. And he says, so now talk to me, what are you looking for? Imagine that kind of thing, that you are following someone he should know. I mean, you would have said, Abba, prof, don't you have brains? Where, where is your prophetic? No. When you are desperate for growth, anything is endurable. When you begin to complain about things, it's because you are not desperate enough for growth. Your boss may be an angry man, but one call from him can be used by God to change your life. Because you mismanaged his anger, he threw you out. And you acted like it didn't matter. See now, it's five years five years everybody who can give you a job respects that same angry man and when he hears they want to give you a job he says i told you leave that person angry it's amazing how god watches people and still leaves those things there they laughed at moses and says man you married a black utopian woman are you the only one god will talk to moses kept quiet but god said i won't keep quiet god came and said what did i hear you say against moses have i ever talked with you face to face do you think moses is just a man and the glory came 
and left his sister Miriam. You know Miriam was a prophetess and she was wondering why God was not using her. And leprosy just came upon her. This honor is not only bad, it has side effects. Side effects that can be demonstrated in your lifetime. People can know that you are carrying this as a token of dishonor. There are many ways to build your life. You can pay your way through in pain. Or you can honor your way through this strange lift called honor. I learned this. I will never dishonor any man. I will never dishonor any church. I will never dishonor any people. When we got to the airport, the precious, precious pastor, by the way, please let's, let's, um, I spotted, let's, let's honor her truthfully. Practice it now. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Please sit down. It was such a gracious reception and my heart was gladdened and I said, boy, look at this. There are people you invite, they are surprised that you are not blessed. They wonder where the anointing went. Your dishonor removed it from them and kept it at the door of the church. Ask Jesus. He enters his city and he says, ah, the carpenter's son is here. No wood for us today. And Jesus says, let's go out of this place. There is no, there is no point trying. They will not receive. Please hear me, young people. Your mother may be in the village. She never went to school. But do you know when she was small, her prophetess mother blessed her and said, whoever you open your mouth, even if it's in Yoruba and bless, your life will change. Please hear me. Hear me. Can I give you one more story and then we'll pray? I didn't finish the Renhard Bonke story. But let me just switch and talk to you about one that relates with you. You've heard it in my teachings. We were on our way to preach, sir, in Ekiti. It would be my first time there. And so we had to fly to um, Iloring, the airport, and then we would go by road. And so when we went, they received us and we were on our way going. And then I started watching the obituaries. Obituaries. And I would see 120 something years. 130 something years. I said, these people are joking. Call all these Guinness Book of Records to come to Nigeria. They said the oldest person is 114. Come to Nigeria where the mystery of longevity dwells. One something. And then I passed and I saw one. 132 years just died in Nigeria within your region. I noted it. I went to preach. When I was done preaching and we returned, I was passing. God is my witness. And then I saw one 145 years. And then I went back to the 132. He was like a senior apostle who just, who just died. And then I said, I told the driver, stop. There is a grace for long life here. Instead of taking the risk and a plane will crash me tomorrow. Now I'm not I'm not being sarcastic. Every possibility is secure through understanding. Graces are transferable. Many of the graces you ask for left heaven since you don't just know how to bring your portion to you. I would have said I'm a man of God, I've spoken long life over people. Uh -huh. I'm too young to take that risk. I plan to live here for a long time. There is, there, is, there is work to do for the kingdom. Please listen. And I don't speak Yoruba. And the man there now, he, he, he doesn't seem to speak English. But he looked like a Christian community. Small community. I said, no, there has to be a way out, oh Lord. I stopped. I packed this car to receive something solid. Eventually, we found someone who could speak limited English. And I said, okay, we are men of God. We came to receive the grace for long life. Who is the oldest man in this place? He must pray for us before we leave. And then eventually, they interpreted it and they told us to go and meet one old man. And we entered the room. I was talking. Then you will interpret. Watch what happened, please. I would speak and then you interpret Yoruba. And we said, we are here to receive the grace for long life. 
I told the man, he said, no, we don't have that grace. He laughed. He said, kneel down. I cannot know this on my own unless you take over. I'll never know this by myself unless you take over. Listen. That man said, he didn't ask, are you a man of God? Are you the one they call Apostle Joshua Selman? That's nonsense. When it has to do with, re with, with reception, you remove your crown. Throw it far from you. It's not only worship that demands removing your crown. Receiving also. He said, kneel down. I knelt down quietly. And the man started praying in Yoruba. Quite honestly, I was not interested in what he was saying. All I know was that it's a law. Or not, it's a law. There is no gate it will not open. I come from the north. There are killings there. I said I must transport this grace for long life. The moment he was praying, I felt like a crown just been put on my head. And when we were done praying, then I appreciated him, packaged the seed and gave him. And then I went out, uh, where to enter the car. Then I saw some women standing there. And then I said, let me go and thank them. They were the first people we contacted. And I went there and I said, you know, Mama, they were interpreting just to say thank you. And they said, you see this man who is 132 years. This is his wife. She was like 120 something. Standing, no stick. I said, let's go back. Let's go back. No, we have to go back. Behind every glory, there is a story. Oh. Let's go back. Two have become one. If the man has died, he's still alive. I thought that she was the wife of his old age, like a Tura. But this is the one and only wife. The man died 132. And then when they told her she laughed, she tapped me, said, follow me. Then she opened a room and I started seeing the pictures from those times where the deep um, camera inside, whatever, if you touch it, it will stay and remain there forever. I started seeing the pictures together. The wife of his youth. What did they know? That the arrows that fly by day, that the noisome pestilence, what did they know? What did God do for them? So you can go to God in prayer and say, God, give me long life. And he said, I'm giving it. He's not lying. It is within your territory. Use honor like a magnet and draw it to you. Every possibility you pray for is already in Lagos here. It is the discernment. The discernment. Those people live as if they are not in Nigeria. Out of my, from my father's side, the only person alive is my father. Is that not a risk to not tap into this kind of grace? And then I told her, I said, Ma, we honor you for who we represent please forget the fact that we are men of god i want you to give me the blessing of a mother and the blessing that was upon this man and the woman said kneel down and she removed her shoes i don't know about you but when a woman takes off her shoes to stand on bare ground you better start rejoicing she took off her shoes and for 15 minutes she even started with a song first before she started blessing me when she finished ask my people wherever we are traveling to whether the plane is going round and round i'm sleeping you know many scriptures it's true that he keeps them in perfect peace but that the same grace listen you know possibilities by the results they produce if they are not captured in your life the grace is not yet there we are going to pray we are going to do a reimpartation of graces because someone has, has, has been the answer to your prayer for a long time everything you are saying God should give you God gave the person sins 
and regardless what is happening in nigeria that person whether finance or whatever doesn't go down there is a grace that is capable through honor this is what took esther she honored mordecai honored her way to the palace please hear me in this conference the lord is speaking to us by the spirit honor is a weapon it is not always the sword that wins sometimes you need to drop the sword and use the weapon women god is speaking to you it is not always the sword deborah was a warrior but she never sat on the throne ask esther how in a seat on the throne ask esther how to replace vashti when you do what vashti did you will follow her ways Vashti said, no, I'm too proud to honor you. She forgot that she was queen only because a king married her. It's why we stand here and we acknowledge him. Regardless of what people say, I will never make the mistake of Vashti because every man is a woman in the spirit. And if you ignore your husband and carve out a niche for yourself, then you are out of that palace. When it was time I will be teaching you, oh please don't miss tomorrow, whatever sacrifice you will make. We will, we will open this book of Esther and God will show you something there. Esther comes to the king, let me give you a preview. And says, Esther, what a lefty. Even if it's to half of my kingdom, I will give you. Esther would have said, that's it me the kingdom the part where the jews are where they want to kill them just give it to me quickly that would have been a wise strategy but let me show you what honor does he says oh king all i want to do is to show you how great you are i have put a banquet a woman under fire there is a threat happening and the king says what is wrong she says nothing i only came to honor you and i want her man to be there so honor can kill that's how she killed a man you honor an enemy to death did you ever learn that honor is a weapon of mass destruction i want a man to participate in that honor a man comes foolishly goes to tell his household you don't know what is going on. I'm not only exalted, I'm, I was specially chosen to eat with the king. And then she flaunts the king's glory. And then the king said, no, there is a catch to this. My wife, or you are now, be serious. What do you want? She says, let it please the king that I repeat this again. King, can I do this again? And the king said, Vashti, why didn't you do this? You would have remained in the palace. This is all I wanted. Oh, foolish Vashti. It's not only Galatians that were foolish. The foolishness started from Vashti. And I hope it ended with the Galatians. May it never, never be oh foolish me. Whoever told you honor was for weak people women whoever told you arguing and shouting with the man and say you don't know you you go and find out see the antecedents you just innocently married me you, you will soon know that just because many times the sword does not win the sword may injure but it may not bring victory there are times you don't need injury you need victory if a war is not needed keep your sword not every victory needs war if you don't have to fight let honor lift you above the challenges is god giving us wisdom and she takes the king and blesses him again then there was a particular feast she now organized it was called the feast of wine that was when she made her request not when there was food she said king drink the wine i serve you this wine something happens when you are full of wine i will show you tomorrow are we together hi 
No, let me tell you. Yours is to play your own part and watch the power of God's laws. They will shift things, shift systems. It will be like you are holding a charm. God, what are you doing? Some of you, you need to practice this. That tomorrow you buy wine and a gift pack and take it to the department where someone vowed that if by June you don't leave this job, except I didn't come here before you. And you give me the gift and say, I'm just here to honor you. And ignorant people will say, Oh, foolish you. That's why they keep talking. Honor is a sword, it can kill. You can honor people down while you rise. <laughs> Her man was honored to the gallows that he built. She never fought her man once. She said, let her man also be in the feast. We are praying. Her man sat down foolishly and while he was eating, he did not know death had come. What is now your request? And she said, my life and that of my people have been threatened. He said, by food. He says, the enemy is this wicked Haman. The king lives for a while and goes to his garden. That's what every good man should do when you are under pressure. Don't talk. Be silent. Go out of that place and be risen with wisdom. Then return. And look at this. He now fell on the bed where Esther was to beg her. You see, but when God wants to make nonsense out of your enemies, their good can be evil spoken of. The king just entered when she was begging and said, It's not enough that you want to kill my people. You now want to rape my wife. And then as soon as he said that, one of the king's men said, Sir, for your information, there is a gallow that was built. Who asked him? Maybe they would have just seen a piece. But it's And the king said, go and hang him. We are going to pray. Listen to me. Every consistent result has come from the sacrifice that a man has paid with God in the secret, with the spirit of understanding. Woe betides a man who ignores greatness when you see it and without all contradiction the less is blessed the less is not the weak one the less is the one in need praise god i've had the opportunity many times to be at the redemption camp and to pass there And I say, Lord, I know that I'm a man, God, that you have helped. But what grace did you put upon our Father? Are these dimensions not transparable? A man that God gives a kilometer and kilometers for an estate. That's more than real estate. There is a grace for territory. You can be struggling to get a space. Oh God, two bedroom flat and you will help me. Whereas you are under a grace that has territory. Listen. Women, you can stand for your husbands this morning. Say the embarrassment that comes from rent has to end in this conference. I'm a product of many anointings. I have trained myself to not despise graces when I see it. I'm not too big to receive. And you must leave. There are artists here sitting now. There are men and women that God has raised from this ministry. Please listen to me. We are going to pray that continue to be honored by God around the nations. You have never taken the time. You have greeted them. How far now, man of God? Kai, you are doing well. You are home. Ah, you mean you are this? Um, I, you're so, you are the one. 
you will never rise that way. This is not human worship. I teach you the wisdom of the ancient. That a day can come, you can say, Sir, I have tried to produce an album for 10 years. That makes people want to help you. Think people just come to help you in this wicked world? Who has your time? There is a grace that draws people. Was it not in your Bible that Gentiles will come? Not that you will look for them to your light and their kings to the brightness of your rising. It says that your gates shall be open. They will be open day and night and not be shut to receive the forces of the Gentiles. There are people in this church who have been marvelously helped like Uzziah by God. By God's grace, finance is not a concern. But you stand today wondering how will tomorrow be financially. It is good that you have learned all the business principles. It is good that you have learned all the investment principles. But do you have the discernment to say, Lord, there is a grace. There are people way before they knew what they were doing, they were already prospering in that area because they were under a grace. Something we have ignored has pegged us in this position and we are going to pray and cry for the next two three minutes everybody you're going to be alone with god and your destiny for your family for your children if you have nothing to pray for for yourself you have to pray for someone you love father i love you the palace was full of every other thing but without dishonor it was about to divide I pray in tongues I'm a man of God I have revelation but every door is shut towards me now I see that there are doors only honor can open ah. there are doors mothers is God speaking to us You are crying that God will touch your children. Look what he has done to children in this church. There are children who have, written, who have risen with flawless track records. Never done anything twice in their life. Let's pray. my crown before pray the highest royalty I am undone before your glorious majesty I cast my crown before the highest royalty the King of kings and Lord of lords, you are the King of kings, you're the King of kings and Lord of lords, your glorious majesty.
praying just a few minutes and we're done Lord is doing a work in our lives honor the mystery behind the strange rising of people I understand the mystery behind the closed doors in my life now that in spite the opportunities that once opened listen if a door ever opened and is now closed this honor closed it and no matter who you are there are many music artists in this nation doors open and this honor shut them out of it there are many preachers that doors opened and dishonor shut them out of it many business people you were granted access to fairs and circles dishonor shut you out cry to the god of heaven the restorer of times and seasons it says the sons of Issachar who had an understanding of the time they knew what israel ought to do man of god are you praying like the hair of samson lord i cry for a restoration let the doors be opened once again let the doors to my music ministry be opened once again let the doors to my ministry be opened once again let the doors to the storehouse of my destiny be opened once again hallelujah praise the lord you are going to ask the lord for grace to discern who is deserving of honor they may not come in forms that you will see and appreciate we live in a society where we are obsessed with scanning things from the vistas of society the sociology within us the greatest things in your life will not come in forms that you will appreciate you will need discernment lord grant me discernment to see the graces to see the individuals and the sacrifices they are men but they are lifts they can lift you they are men but they are spiritual systems that can carry you to untold dimensions they don't have to be men and women of God in ministry. They have to be men and women who are carrying something divine and something powerful. Few minutes we are praying. Let it be from the depth of your heart. Honor, heartfelt, sincere, fruitful, unbiased, genuine from your heart. Hallelujah. Listen, please listen to me. Listen to me. Listen to me. When you honor people, just because you suspect there is something in them you can have is hypocrisy honor is a culture that must be truthful i know you have the fortitude for honor when i see what you do with people who have nothing to give you honor is a culture that is too contagious to exempt anybody if that spirit is upon you you will honor the mighty and the low at the same You don't treat everybody like a dog and suddenly turn to someone and say wow uh, sean sir no you are a hypocrite sir. honor is not political it follows the purity of your desire must be fettered by the sincerity of your desire it is the reason why you can kneel down and have hands prayed for you and never receive anything you will fall and stand up and go back but someone can be in the secret place and your pastor right in your room you can say lord i discern that this is a man of god i don't know what you put upon this man but lord i receive i've opened him up to a door 
Hallelujah. Can I say a word of prayer? Father, I stand here as one who has been granted grace and mercy of the Lord. I stand here only as one privilege of your grace. May we never be ashamed to let men see you. Let the glamour of palace never make us who make the mistake of Vashti. I stretch my hands upon you right now and I pray for you. In the name that is above all names, I'm speaking by the Spirit. That every dimension you lost through dishonor, every level, I stand by the God of Jeshua, the one who rides upon the wings of the wind, and I shift you back to that level. I shift you right now, step back into that dimension dimension in the name of Jesus Christ the son of the living God I speak to every door that has been closed over your destiny through this honor by the message of the God of David let that door be opened again in the name of Jesus God is the God of the second chance he says and Adam knew his wife again and to bear a son and he called him Seth I'm praying for someone who has faith to believe I stand here and I shift you to a new level in your life in the name of Jesus Christ I shift you to a new dimension spiritually financially Please let me encourage you. I know that a number of us here do not fellowship with this parish, but please forgive my bias. Let me plead with you. Please do not miss the next session. I want to show you a very deep mystery in the book of Esther. And then I trust God together with all who will be ministering here that God will put something upon your life that when you walk out of this conference it will be worth any sacrifice father we give you praise in the name of jesus Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We bless you this morning and we decree and declare that forever your name alone be glorified. We thank you for this opportunity again that you have provided to sit, to learn, to grow, to receive. We declare that our hearts are opened in the name of Jesus. And Father, we declare again that this morning there is the hearing of faith and the working of miracles. Lord, we decree and declare that your word will come with power and it will be edifying to our spirits. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Were you blessed? Let's honor Pastor Natalia. Amazing, amazing man of God. God bless you, sir. Please, before you sit, would you help me again to honor the man of God, the angel over this house and his adorable wife. God bless you, sir. God bless you. Truly honor you. Praise the Lord. I honor every, every distinguished personality in this place. May the Lord increase you in Jesus' name. Please be seated. I'll be up here only for a few minutes.
but then I pray that within this time that we have together the Lord will speak to us and the Lord will challenge us in the name of Jesus we began to explore the book of Esther yesterday to examine the various principles that Esther engaged to rise from the backside of the mountain right to the palace and to be able to preserve God's people and um, we examined the subject of honor yesterday please I like for you to get the tapes if you were not here yesterday make an effort I believe there should be a system to access that get the teaching and listen very powerfully there are teachings that that bring very definite shape praise the Lord it's not one of those things you add to your knowledge is a very very important subject to understand Psalms 1013 Psalms 102 and verse 13 is projected then we'll just read in concert if you have it and you can see it let's read together please one to read thou shall arise and have mercy upon Zion for the time to favor her hmm. yea the set time is come one more time if you believe this is for you I like you to read it convincingly thou shall arise and have mercy upon Zion for the time Exodus chapter 3 please and verse 21 my god this is for someone this morning exodus chapter 3 and verse 21 please let's read one to read and i will give these people favor in the sight of the egyptians and it shall come to pass that when ye go ye shall not go empty who is god speaking to this morning that i will give these people favor in the sight of the egyptians and the proof that i gave them favor is that as they go they will not go empty father bless us this morning in the name of jesus please sit the bible says the things that were written are for time they were for our learning so that we through the comfort of scripture may find hope that means that one of the systems allocated for our growth is to study the dealings of god in the past how he lifted people how he restored people how he opened doors so that we can study what they did and also engage and then likewise receive the results that we so desire this morning very briefly we're going to be looking at the second key that esther engaged the first was honor and let me just do a quick recap i said yesterday that the honor is the discerning the celebrating and if need be the rewarding of an individual as a measure of their usefulness in your life are we together now that honor is a key that can open any door every door closes because of dishonor dishonor to god dishonor to men and dishonor to principles please pay attention this is true everything was correct in the palace minus dishonor the palace was almost dividing the chariots were still there the wealth in the treasury were still there the servants were still there but one woman communicating dishonor was about to divide 127 provinces there's no telling how far the disaster that dishonor can produce in the life of an individual i did say yesterday that it's not enough to be gifted to be skilled it's not enough to have the intellectual wherewithal it is important this is the world of men it's not enough to honor god you must honor men praise the lord yes so honor transited the young village girl called hadassah to become queen the second key that we see there and would we'll just build on that very briefly this morning is favor please say favor, favor. one more time say favor. favor the number one reason people succeed in life is favor it is true 
but I want to make an adjustment very quickly this morning because I think there has been uh, what I would call an observation in the way and manner favor is taught. The very definition of favor that has been communicated to people is the reason why they never experience it. Um, for starters, let me tell you, favor never happens just once. If it happens just once, it is breakthrough, not favor. Favor is predictable, repeatable, under any circumstance. Praise the Lord. It says, Thou shalt arise and have mercy upon Zion for the time to favor her. Yea, the set time is come. Hallelujah. The mainstream definition of favor is unmerited access. I agree, but broadly speaking, I disagree. I disagree because favor like love and wisdom has dimensions. And only one of the dimensions of favor should be seen as unmerited access. And that is favor when you are dealing with the saving grace. The saving grace that was communicated in the substitutionary sacrifice of Jesus Christ. It is unmerited. We receive by faith. Nothing can be added. Nothing can be subtracted. I agree. But every other dimension of favor in this kingdom is merited. Please listen. It is important. The proposition that all the dimensions of favor are unmerited will leave us in utter frustration. Favor is a reaction. It can be programmed. There are exact things you do that culminates to favor. Proverbs chapter 13, please, and 15, if we have it quickly. Let's just read it. Read it with me if you are a Christian and you believe the Bible. Proverbs chapter 13 and verse 15. One to read, please. Good understanding giveth favor, but the way of transgressors is hard. The Bible talks about two pregnant women here, the two pregnant women. The first woman is called good understanding. She is a woman and has a womb. And the other woman is called transgression, also a woman. That both women can give birth and that good understanding can give birth to a baby and the name of the baby is favor. And that transgression can also give birth to a baby and the name of the baby is hardship a transgressor is not a sinner a transgressor is not an unbeliever a transgressor is a consistent violator of god's ordinances and that can happen even if you are born again and the bible says you will continue to program the birthing of an experience called hardship this is true spiritually this is true politically this is true intellectually and so on and so forth favor is programmable and the mother that gives birth to favor is good understanding there is an exact belief construction that you can have and it can birth favor in your life again and again praise the lord the bible lets us know that when vashti was banished the king decided to gather all the young virgins and the cousin of this man who sat at the gate mordecai he decided to give his cousin a chance to see if per adventure the king would find interest in her are we still together and then the bible says that hey guy i I'm, I'm just rushing because i don't want us to spend time looking from scripture to scripture and hadassah is also brought together with the virgins the bible says they were kept under the custody of a man called Hegai, the keeper of the king's virgins and all the women were given everything that they wanted to adorn themselves to look as presentable as possible and then the bible tells us very surprisingly if you would give us please esther chapter 2 and verse 15 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 the bible tells us that now when the turn of esther the daughter of abihai the uncle of mordecai who had taken her for his daughter was come to go unto the king she required nothing but what Hegai, the king's chamberlain the keeper of the women appointed go on please and esther of in favor in the sight of all them who looked upon her 
now look at this it looks like a charm for as long as your eye made contact with esther you were compelled to favor her it's a grace that a village girl stands in the midst of many other people and whoever looked at her had an interest in her ah what betides a man who is alive in a day without the grace for favor i tell you sincerely life will be hard nobody loves you by default it takes a grace to make men interested in your issue there is a grace that can make men isolate their own concerns and zoom their interest towards you it's a grace people are too busy for you to attract that level of commitment from them there is a grace that must come from heaven that can compel a man to be desired that people go out of their way as though under an influence verse 17 same esther chapter 2 and verse 17 and the king my god loved esther above all the women before esther arrived he was considering others this is wonderful and when esther showed up the king loved esther above all the women and she obtained grace and favor in his sight more than all the virgins what was the reward so that he set the royal crown upon her head and made her queen instead of Vashti the mystery the enthroning power of favor all through scripture we see how that man found favor with God was it not for 430 years the Bible records that the nation of Israel were under the captivity of the Egyptians to the point that Pharaoh would not even give them straw and in one night please say one night favor has speed oh, that you can see a man today and turn and turn back and not identify the person again because the favor of God has transited the person this is true this is true it's not just a church talk I tell you when the grace for favor comes upon your life you will join those clapping for you to stand in wonder and say God I know you can move but what is this when the lord turned again the captivity of zion the bible says we were like them that dream and so said they among the hidden the lord had done great things for us i came this morning to share this scripture and to trust that god will put something upon our lives this morning that we, when we step out of this place you see remember i told you yesterday that nothing comes from god to men directly everything comes from god through men to men and everything leaves you from satan through men from men or if i would use that expression nothing will come from god to you directly including salvation it will come from god through a man to a man so if god says yes and the man in the middle says yes, the answer for you will still be no it takes both God and the man to say yes for your destiny to say yes praise the Lord favor favor Haman began to plot the, the annihilation of the Jews and he obtained permission from the king promising to give him some money in return and then the report got to Esther and Mordecai had encouraged her stand up and go and advocate for us but she was afraid because traditionally you would not enter into the king's inner chamber without his invitation and if he did not lift his golden censer the price the penalty was death are we together and now Esther was about to take to make a very costly sacrifice then she says please declare fast all of us let me take the risk of going to the king if i perish i perish and then the bible says that esther stands before the king and then the king not only lifts his golden censer but then he says what do you desire that up to half of my kingdom i will give to you the king was willing to divide his province into two on account of a woman who obtained favor from the lord life is not hard when you have favor 
Hallelujah. Eventually, she beckons on the king to come and dine again and again and again. And then in the process of the dining, she reveals that her man is the traitor, the enemy that would want to destroy the Jews. And then, you know the story, he ends up hanging in the same gallows that he created. Notice in the entire book of Esther, there was no record of war with the sword. Only two instruments were used to both lift people and create a system of defense, honor and favor. It is not always about fighting with armory. Honor is a weapon. Favor is a weapon. Hallelujah. Scattered here this morning, I believe, are people who desire higher levels of favor. If everyone were to write a request here, most of the requests will be favor dependent. You are trusting that God will touch the heart of a king, the heart of a noble, the heart of someone towards you. And I am telling you this, you've heard me say it again and again, that everybody who blesses you has relatives who are also in need. Whatever will make him leave them and come to you must be supernatural. That a few men saw a man who was crippled and insisted that today you must be healed and they were willing to tear the zinc and take the risk and brought a man down. It's not enough to be sincere. It's not even enough to just be godly. There is a grace for favor. The proof of favor is not money. The proof of favor is the willingness for men to help you. If all you have is money, you are not favored. The real proof of favor is the loyalty of men to your needs. And this morning, I believe with all my heart that it will take favor to move us from where we are to the next level it will take favor to see the fulfillment of everything that God has said in my life and in ministry I have seen very gifted people because I have learned by experience that truly the race is not to the swift and that the battle is not to the strong but wealth is not only or always to them who are wise when God's favor comes upon you it will look unfair but that's just how it works in one day a man's life can change and you will be amazed that that day can be today that a man's life can change did you know that most things we pray for are already on earth but they are in the hands of men whoever holds what you need must love you to give you but it will take God. My assignment is simple this morning. For someone who has been stagnated in one position, could be a family, could be financially, could be spiritually, could be in your career, your business, politics and government. Let me tell you, nothing beats the power of true favor. Favor. And the king sent for Joseph and they brought him out of his dungeon there are times you don't have the influence at the gates you need somebody already at the gates to speak for you you may never have the opportunity to make your demands at the gate you will depend on the favor of those who are at the gates my prayer all the time is lord who are you about to lift may i hold the hands of that person while we rise it is powerful to discern who is the next person god is about to lift There are people who left people two minutes before they are lifting. One day before they are lifting. One year before they are lifting. May you not be like that oh. Yeah. May God surround your life with people he's about to lift. Because you can be blessed by association. The easiest way to be blessed is through relationships. God called Abraham alone. Lord said, I'm not, you, are, you wouldn't go alone. And Lot went with him. And Lot increased too. When Lot left Abraham, he went down too. That means it was not anything he did on his own. The power of association. 
I come from the north and territorially speaking I've said it again and again that this region has a lot of um, a lot of what would I call it now a sense of empathy you can have people rally around you to encourage you to rise it is not necessarily so where I come from you can have that that moral that that humane participation but they may not have the wherewithal to lift a man so at that point you need favor exclusively because you can come out from a region where there is no basis of advantage whatsoever i am a product of what the favor of god can do and my assignment is that for someone who truly believes maybe maybe the first and the only one even from your family that if you can receive this grace today I tell you the truth in the name of the Lord God of heaven your life will be a marvel even to you I've heard a lot of people say but this is unfair I'm better than this person unfortunately life does not work like that it is what is on you that governs what is around you Esther obtained favor Esther defended the cause of the gospel by preserving the Jews otherwise there would be no Jesus there would be no salvation there would be no redemption a woman not a prophet not a king not a warrior are we ready to pray I don't know how you are going to pray this morning but find a way of crying to say oh God at such a time as this arise and bring favor to my life bring favor to my career bring favor to my destiny are there people who can pray here lift your voice and pray pray passionately and pray truthfully I will give these people favor before the Egyptians and it shall come to pass that when ye go ye will not go empty emptiness is proof of lack of favor pray pray for your children if not for yourself pray for your business pray for your career a woman loses favor and in 24 hours she leaves the king's palace never to return again the village girl finds favor and within a short time she's seated with royalty grant me favor O oh god in this season thou shall arise and have mercy for the time to favor me the time to favor me if someone praying you are in church this morning the time to favor me don't say i have an uncle who likes me don't say i have a friend who likes me no man can give you what god has not given you hallelujah listen 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 let me tell you this while it is true that all blessings come through men god must direct them to bless you if god does not place it in the heart of any man you can watch your needs in the heart of a man there are people here it is one signature that can change your life but for decades the biro is in his hands but will not sign it takes favor it takes more than desire it takes more than lobbying just because you know a and b and c does not guarantee help he says i will lift up my eyes onto the hills and he says from whence cometh my help my help he says comes from the lord the maker of the heavens and the earth some may trust in horses he says and some may trust in chariots but we will trust in the name of god i'd like you to pray a prayer and say lord who is the next destiny helper cause them to show up in this season whether they be in lagos the name that is above all names i pray i pray who has been anointed in this season
destined to be part of my success who has been anointed by God to be part of my growth who has been anointed to advocate my preservation to advocate my establishment who has been anointed to see that I remain in honor is someone praying this morning from Zion. Send help. The gift of man. Send help. Send help to my career. Send help to my ministry. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm rounding up. In 2 Kings, don't turn there, chapter 5, the Bible talks about a man called Naaman. He says he was the captain of the Syrian army. And the Bible says he was a valiant man. But, but, excelling in a level, but he was leprous. And one day, one of the captives, a young slave girl, you must pray for discernment because sometimes your helpers don't look like helpers until you see what their help does. Who would have known that the destiny of a warrior was tied in a slave girl? She said, oh, that my king would hearken to me that you would go down there is a prophet and they sent a letter to the king and the king said, am I God? You are looking for trouble. Elisha heard about it and he said, let Naaman come and know that there is a prophet in Israel. When he came, he told him, go and wash in the Jordan seven times. It takes humility to receive from destiny helpers because sometimes the instructions are ego stinging. He said, there are many other rivers. And Elisha did not see a need to repeat himself. And the young slave girl again pleaded with him and said, I know this man. If he speaks, believe him. And he went and dipped himself. One, two, three, four, five, six. And that man was healed. You may have excelled in a level, maybe in career, but is that the best? There may be an area. And that area that is wanting is where you will need the favor of God in this season. I'd like you to pray and say, Lord, give me discernment, the eyes to see, the eyes to see the people who will be used by you to lift me. Please pray. We're rounding up this morning, but you must pray. He gathered us by His Spirit to help us. of the son of the living God Jesus is hanging on that tree no man has the courage to talk to Caesar to release that body because there are times that it takes influence for your voice to be amplified and nobody none of the disciples they had the desire but not the influence and then a man of influence called Joseph of Arimathea went to meet the king and say i demand let me tell you not every voice can open your door influence is powerful is it all right if you cry that god will send one man of true influence into your life in this season please lift your voice and pray. don't reject influence don't fight it you will fight it to your peril send men of influence oh god to my life and to my destiny 
send a man to my destiny that has the credibility that has the leverage that has the voice to advocate my lifting send the joseph of arimathea to my life final scripture the bible talks to us about a very strange man in the bible called Mephibosheth have you read about such a man and the bible says that at his birth the midwife made a mistake it was not his fault but as a result of another man's mistake someone is suffering there are times that you are in positions that have nothing to do with you but in any case you are now a victim of that situation is there a system where god can bail such men out the bible says that one time that david looks at this man and falls in love with him he says is there any man in the house of saul that i may show him kindness were there not other people then they carry a wig ah god oh they carry a weak man to the king do you know that deformities and imperfections are not allowed within the palace historically and yet he said this man you will not only dine with me once i told you favor does not happen just once he says from today this will be your place you will stay here apostle it's not my fault how i came it's not my fault the the issue i'm in now i didn't know anything about it i was just walking in a bank and they said some money was missing and all of us are about to leave i know it's not your fault but then the system requires that you also be punished unless favor bails you out can we pray lord i may not have the strength on my own but please may someone like me enough to arise for me in this season please lift your voice and pray you will be surprised at the testimonies that arise from this someone must be interested in your life and your situation enough Listen, listen while standing let me just tell you three ways to activate favor in your life number one is by sowing seeds of honor you activate favor by sowing honor you are not entitled to favor from anybody you detest reject or trivialize you must have the humility to show honor is proof of wisdom can you adapt to the complexity of men so that you can receive the blessing that comes with them honor oh, number two you can pray favor provoking prayers like we have been doing you can actually pray your way into a realm of favor number three the third way to activate favor is by receiving what i call the esther anointing there is a grace that comes and that true prophecy one scripture and i pray for you and i'm on my seat ezra chapter 6 and verse 14 please never forget this scripture it's a scripture the lord showed me and it changed my life please read with me if you are a christian is projected let's save time one to read and the elders of the jews build it uh-huh and they prospered through the prophesying of Haggai the prophet and Zechariah the son of Edo and they built it and finished it stop there it's one thing to build it's another thing to prosper it's another thing to finish they prospered through the prophesying of two strange prophets Haggai the prophet and Zechariah the son of Edo prophecy is powerful he says and by a prophet the lord brought israel out of egypt and by a prophet were they preserved he says believe in the lord your god 
You see, unbelievers know this. They do everything they have to do and they know there must be a spiritual advantage. And so they will resort to dark powers to cap up everything. If all your effort ends in this three-dimensional realm, you will be frustrated. There is a dimension of the prophetic that must supply stability to your life. It is true. Every time there was chaos and disarray, the prophetic came. Speak to the dry bones. Speak to the axe head that fell. Speak to it. I want to pray in one minute. And please, I want you to believe. There is nothing a man can accept it is given to him from God. We stand as ministers, privileged stewards of the mysteries of the kingdom. But let me admit to you with all humility that when God gives you something, you have it. It doesn't matter whether you, when you have it, you have it. If you do not have it, you do not have it. You know you have it by the results that show. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, who is the Son of the living God, I stand here this morning in the presence of mighty servants of God, in the presence of captains of industry, in the presence of political veterans, in the presence of men and women who have tasted of your grace. And I stand by the privilege of your grace, according to the measure of grace you have supplied. I speak to everyone under the sound of my voice, rise to a new level of results. Rise to a new level of results. I prophesy in the name of Jesus. I join my faith with the faith of our Father, the overseer of this great ministry. And I declare for someone here, let today be the season of your rising. For someone here, let today be the season of your restoration. For someone here, let today be the season of your lifting. In the name of Jesus, I declare any door that has refused to open, I stand by the power of prophecy. And in the name of Jesus, I speak to that door. Ephata, be opened now. Be opened now. Be opened now. And the book of remembrance was brought before King Ahasuerus. And when that book was opened, he said, Mordecai did this and that. What reward has been given him? Listen. There are some of you who have been good to people and they have forgotten you. I stand by the grace of God this morning and I command remembrance on your issue. I declare remembrance over your issue. In the mighty name of Jesus. When Joseph interpreted the dream of the wine presser, he pleaded with him, when you go back, don't forget me. And he forgot him for two years. It takes God to make those you have helped to remember you. I pray for you. Whatever has made them to forget you. In this season. In this season. May God cause them to remember you for good. Please hear me. Do you know that Mordecai according to scripture consulted with dark powers and define us to know the exact date to kill the jews he didn't just strike any day please believe it that there are arrows that fly by day and there is the noisome pestilence the destruction that wasted in noonday that there are men that rise just when your blessing is coming you come down Zechariah chapter 1 when you read verse 18 he said what seest thou and he said four horns he said these are the horns that have lifted up themselves against Jerusalem against Judah so that no man will lift up his head he said but I have sent four carpenters I have come this morning as a privileged carpenter that any power sitting on anyone's destiny in the name of the God of heaven the God of Jeshurun I command that they leave your destiny now
I declare finally first for our mothers and the women in this church and then for the members in this church and then for all our guests and our visitors that in the name of Jesus whatever represents an expectation because of our activity today we may not have the time to minister and prophesy to people individually and I apologize we have to honor the time and allow other activities happen but I agree in the name of Jesus that everything that has represented your request if it brought tears from your eyes then you must cry again for joy if it ever brought tears of sorrow then I declare you will cry again but this time for joy in the name of Jesus Christ Father we give you all the praise in the name of Jesus Christ let it be done we establish it and we declare that the favor that is upon our lives now will shift us and the testimonies will prove that we received something this morning in the name of Jesus give Jesus a big
vang không mà không bay đứng xa nhờ em bay em còn đỡ đôi ông bay anh còn người ta xưa ta chúng con giữ nhau chẳng để giữ lấy em khi cơn mưa về đến và chẳng cần nhau khi anh với em cùng một đêm trôi em ơi ta còn gì nữa đâu một cơn mưa ngày hôm qua ta còn lại gì nữa đâu khi em Give a fuck what you say Yeah, I'ma do shit my way So you can go kick rocks I'ma stack bricks up Build what I want to make Yo, I got a lot of shit to say So I'ma do this every day I'll be writing things until I'm fucking buried in my grave Six feet deep under but my body won't decay Cause my messages are kind of so they'll put them on display Oh yeah, I rap with a certainty I have a sense of urgency A message for eternity For everyone internally I had some people burning me But now they fucking learn to see I ain't the one to fuck with Now they Nervously and I don't really care what you think of me respectfully You can kick rocks if you think you're fucking better See, I will outwork you, turn you to an enemy Hurt you so bad that you're gonna need some therapy I got the motherfucking recipe I've been cooking up hits, I'ma leave a legacy You'll be looking small when you're standing right next to me I'm 5'10", bitch, but I'm 10 feet next to me I don't give a fuck what you say Yeah, I'ma do shit my way So you can go kick rocks, I'ma stack bricks up, build what I want to make Cause I don't give a fuck what you say, yeah I'ma do shit my way So you can go kick rocks, I'ma stack bricks up, build what I want to make